All right, everyone, in a bid not to anger the 30 or 40 percent of people who are not congealed behind one of the top five candidates, Politico is not fully literally stating the obvious, but let's paraphrase their article, link in the description archived, of course, um, that they posted. Essentially what this says is, hey, uh, now that the first debate is over, nobody else in the bottom part of the field moved at all. It's basically just movement at the top. There are five candidates in the Democratic field. If you're shy of Buddy Geeg's level, you don't exist at this point. You shouldn't even be in. I, I expect after the second debate, for any lower half candidate that doesn't get any boost and isn't already wealthy like Stayer so they can self-fund, what's gonna? And he'll probably stay in because he's expecting maybe people at the bottom are like never Biden, never Bernie, never Warren, never Harris, never Buddy Geeg, and so they just refuse to support him. And he's going to say, hey, there's an alternative. Get me into the top level. Maybe I can bump Buddy Geeg down and I can be number five. And he can get in there and maybe be viable. That's, I think, his operative plan, which explains why he waited for Swalwell to get out. The Swalwell at least had a little name recognition. Uh, but the thing is, like, all of these bottom tier candidates after the second debate, there's a good reason to think that some of them will get out. Because the money will dry up. And if you can't self-fund and you don't have a corporate backer and you're not getting any grassroots support, and it's basically done. The gig is up. They should drop out too. Like if I were Pelosi or Perez or someone leading the Democrats, I'd say, look, if you're below 3% right now, please cut it out. Get out of the field. Let those that are actually viable punch each other in the face instead of having a free-for-all two more fucking nights. Uh, and then two more nights again in, what, September or whatever, uh, so that Trump can laugh about it and make a mockery of our party's schismatic tendencies. That should be what they're advising, but the problem is this. You can't tell that to anyone on the left. You can't tell that to a Williamson or a Yang, you know, some communist or something, because they're not going to listen. They'll use that as a campaign strategy. They'll grandstand about it and say, look, the DNC doesn't like me, those crooked corporatists there that lead you. Uh, they don't like me because I'm the real threat to the establishment. That's why Yang has tried to do that. Williamson does this, although she does she veils it in hippie language. So she's like, oh, I'm I'm the natural choice. I'm the one that can save you from 5G and chemtrails. <laughs> it's not stuff. Oh man, can you imagine if, if if like let's say that like there's a the top level candidates go to a private meeting and a plane crashes into the building or something and Williamson ends up becoming like the nominee? Can you imagine how fucking funny that would be? Maybe I should vote for Williamson in the Dem primaries just as a joke. Who else? I mean, I am Trump's already gonna win every primary because he's running unopposed. Bill Weld is not an opponent. He just exists. He's trying to make money. Uh, because Bill Weld's good at that. He did that for the Libertarians. Oh, he was a great for fundraising there. I wonder how much he embezzled, by the way. How much money did he end up making off of that little third-party scheme pretending to be a lifelong convert-to-libertarianism sort of individual? I will never join the Republicans again. Oh, I'm running as a Republican against Trump for 2020. Yeah, you know, re really great guy, that Bill Weld. He's very good opportunist, very sly. He's convinced a lot of people to side with him. So he stabs the Republicans in the back, then stabs the Libertarians in the back. Now he's preparing to stab the Republicans in the back again. Anyone voting for Bill Weld is nuts. Uh, so Trump is one. There's no reason to vote in the Republican open primaries here. I might as well take a Dem ballot because there's, you know, actual choices. I don't know. I'll probably I'll vote for myself. Maybe I'll, t I'll take a Republican ballot and, ballot and vote for myself as a joke. No, I'll let other people do that. Uh, that'd be hilarious. Ah, I got 10 votes for the presidency that I'm not even eligible for because I think you have to be 32, right? I'm only 31, so I don't think... I'm... Well, actually, no, by the election I would be. But I haven't filed any paperwork. Oh, yeah, the uh, FEC wouldn't allow it. But it'd be funny if someone who never filed any paperwork just was randomly chosen to be president. It'd be funny if, like, the candidates were such slime bags that some random independent that never expected to win wins anyway, and they're like, well, I didn't file the paperwork, but okay, here I am taking the oath of office. This is a constitutional gray area. But imagine Williamson being the candidate. would be hilarious. But she's not viable. There are five viable people. Joe Biden, the front runner. Bernie Sanders, who's quickly slipping down into non-viable status. He's, he's basically done. Warren and Kamala, which are tied for second place, they're, they're the lefties, the, the left wing, I have a vagina candidates. Sanders is the far left candidate who doesn't have a vagina, and so he's falling out of favor because he's a white male. And then you've got Buttigieg, who he's gay, but he's in fifth because he refuses to make his gayness an issue. If he were to use that as a wedge issue and say, look, I'm, I'm, 
here and I'm, I'm proud to wave the rainbow flag. I'm going to replace the stars and stripes with just a bunch of multicolored stripes. He'd get double the number of votes in the Democratic field if he did that. The problem is this. Here's the problem. You have so many far leftists within the party, and they're really energized right now. They're the energized voting bloc in the Democratic core. There are so many of them that it's impossible for a candidate probably to win because they have to wine and dine them to get nominated, which means they have to go far left, further left than Sanders. Sanders is no longer far left enough. Warren and Kamala have breezed past him and into commie land. So you have to be really far left, unless it's Biden. He's the only thing that can save the Democrats that particular embarrassment. You have to be really far left to get the nomination, but then when you get to the general to face off against Trump, you've gone so far to the left that he looks absolutely moderate by comparison. He could come out and say, no, I want to build two border walls and deport even, I even want to deport the residents, fuck, you know, and he'd still be the moderate candidate. Yeah, I want to decrease taxes to zero. He'd still be the moderate uh, economic platform. The, the left has gone so far, the New Green Deal is considered sane and, and a moderate centristic proposal by some of the people that are in the field. And not I'm not talking about Williamson or Yang or some other, you know, socialist at the bottom of the heap. I'm talking about viable candidates like Warren have praised the, the New Green Deal. Praised a deal that did, says, hey, we should eliminate all forms of pastoral agriculture, no more beef for you, no more transatlantic flight. We're going to eliminate all fossil fuel in 10 years, and, and, and we're going to uh, get rid of nuclear somehow. Everything, we'll have only electric cars. We're going to eliminate private automobiles. This is considered a sane plan. You've got, you've got to understand, this plan is considered sane, was endorsed by both Harris and Warren. They're arguably tied for second place in the Dem field now, and Sanders, who supposedly is far left, is no longer far left enough for some of these people. He's slipped to fourth, arguably. This is, a this is a true clown car. Biden, meanwhile, and Buttigieg to an extent, they look sane. Biden looks sane. And like the Democrats, you got to back Biden. If he, like Biden will lose against Trump almost certainly, but he'll do better, number one. He won't be embarrassed on a national stage as much. And number two, your party won't have lurched so far to the right, I mean so far to the left, that it becomes unelectable. The down-ballot damage that would be done if your candidate is Kamala Harris or Elizabeth Warren, will be incalculable. Yes, your party will crash and burn and lose. Even if they were to win, you'd lose so much support in the House that Republicans would probably say you'd impeach on day two. They might even have the votes to remove from office at that point. No, we're not going to deal with the socialists. We're getting you out of office. Fuck you. Then they impeach the vice president too, and then the Speaker of the House, who will be a Republican, becomes acting president. That'd be a funny one. Yeah, the GOP might very well just do that. I would even support it. Look, somebody like Kamala Harris or Elizabeth Warren is not qualified to run this country. I'm sorry, but they are ineligible for that office. They're nuts. They're insane. The proposals that they've latched onto belie lunacy. Lunatics are not allowed to become the president of the United States. Lunatics aren't even allowed to vote. So, I mean, I don't know what you're talking about, dude. The Democrats are fucking crazy. And Politico's stating the obvious, so basically, time is ticking for these lower level candidates to prove themselves and rise up high enough to be viable. They're already not viable. If you've bottomed out, you're not going to go back up. We saw this with Fiorina. She was right in the 2016 Republican primary. She was riding at like 2%. She has a good debate performance, shoots up to like 10 or something. What happened within a couple of weeks? She went right back down to her long term mean. Those trajectories that you see on RCP, the aggregated trajectories are what you should be looking at. The only person who now is a viable alternative, I think, to Biden is Elizabeth Warren. I'm not sure Kamala Harris has staying power. We'll see over the course of the next month, roughly. And we've got to wait for the second debate. If neither she nor Elizabeth Warren has eclipsed Biden after that, it, he's basically a shoe in for the nomination. You realize that, right? We don't even have to wait any further, really. I guess he could have a heart attack, he could have like a stroke, he could have a major gaffe, that's you know what I've been counting on is the only major possibility of him being knocked down a peg. Biden is Biden's own worst enemy. All Biden has to do is stay silent. Go to your rallies, have a very tele teleprompted, pre-scripted, don't go off the, the rails at all, nothing, ex nothing that's extemporaneous, nothing spur of the moment, plan everything 100%, listen to your staff. Don't, don't hug any children or, or little old ladies or anything. Leave people alone. Don't touch them. Unless it's your wife. That's okay. I don't know. Does Biden have any kids now that his, uh, didn't his, his son die? Does he have other kids? 
You probably shouldn't even scrunch their shoulders. That'll look even more creepy. Uh, and then Biden becomes a nominee. The problem is, of course, is a possibility he does make a gaffe. Or there is a possibility, like if Kamala has another really, really good debate performance and it becomes clear she's the attack dog of the party and nobody challenges her, is Gillibrand tried and failed. Uh, if Biden doesn't punch back down and say, you know, enough is enough, you know, back in the kennel with you, basically, uh, then, then she could definitely eclipse him. Yeah, she could become the nominee. Kamala Harris 2020. Oh, my God. What a freak show that would be. Yeah, I'm, I'm a far leftist who used to throw people in jail for simple drug possession. I'm facing off against this dude who's balanced the economy totally, uh, trying to make peace in Korea, which I hope happens, uh, and, and actually managed to pass prison and drug law reform. But, yeah, you should vote for me anyway because, you know, I'm black. That's basically what it would boil down to. She'd run an identity politics-based campaign, and she would lose. That's about all. Peace out.